This is Monday, December 4th, 2023. We are in Natick, Massachusetts, and this tape is part of the Morse Institute Library's continuing Veterans Oral History Project. My name is Maureen Sullivan, and we are privileged to have with us today Larry Honeywell. Junior. Junior, okay. And welcome, Larry. Junior. Thank you. May I ask when you were born? Melrose, Massachusetts. And when were you born? August 15th, 1923. So you just turned 100 years old. Yes, ma'am. Congratulations. Thank you. What community do you currently live in? Natick. And your marital status? My wife is deceased. And do you have children? I have three. Grandchildren? Four. Great-grandchildren? Seven. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about life in Melrose growing up. I grew up in Melrose, Massachusetts during the Depression in 1930s. I was school age and things were tough really tough. Uh, What did your father do for a living? My father was a sheet metal mechanic, made uh, anything out of sheet metal. Are there any siblings in your family? Uh, Brothers and sisters? Yes, I came from a family of 10. I'm the second oldest of ten. First four were boys, one girl, then one boy, and four more girls. Mm-hmm. Now, ten. Yeah. yeah. Did you go to school in Melrose? Yes, I did. I went all all twelve grades of school in Melrose. So when did you graduate from Melrose High School? Graduated from Melrose High in 1941. And what did you do after high school? Did you go to work? Uh, Yes, I did. I was employed by H.P. Hood and Son in Lynn. Do you remember what you were doing on December 7th, 1941, when Pearl Harbor was attacked. I was working for my son. No, I don't, no, I don't remember. No. Okay, don't. that's okay. So, after Pearl Harbor, United States is in World War II. Yeah. Where and when did you enter the military? I entered the uh, Navy in 1942, in December of 42 and did my boot camp at uh, Great Lakes, Mm -hmm. Illinois. Now, why the Navy? My father was in the Navy in World War I. And do you remember what boot camp at Great Lakes was like? Bunch of wooden sheds all put up in a row with uh, wood stoves, and, but we really had hard wood floors. Oh, no, no. A Great Lake sh- shuffle was polished in these wood floors with a piece of steel wool when you first was called to <coughs> quarters. Yeah, and you're going during the winter, so that must have been brutal. It was very, very cold. And the wind off the lakes. And we, we, we made it, so. And after you made it through basic, uh, what kind of specialized training did you receive? I was sent to Aviation Machinist Mate School at Chicago Pier, Illinois, not too far from Great Lakes. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Now, did you choose that field, or did the Navy choose it for you? The Navy chose it for me through a questionnaire. And what was involved in learning how to be an aviation machinist? Making all kinds of emergency repairs <clears throat> on airplanes and doing engine maintenance, <clears throat> fabric repairs, metal repairs, mm -hmm. electrical repairs. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> Really a quick, easy course in maintenance of airplanes. Now, Larry, how long did the course take? Probably a little over three months. Okay. And when you uh, got out of the course, what rank were you? Did you get... No. No? <clears throat> no, uh, seven second. Okay. <clears throat> now, tell us what happened after you got out of machinist school. Then I went to uh, gunnery school. It was when the f 50 calibers first came out. And I was in Oklahoma uh, in <clears throat> assembling and disassembling and general maintenance of, a, of the new 50 caliber uh, aircraft gun. So. Boy, they had you doing everything now, weren't they? Yes, yeah, a little bit of it, a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. So you're in Oklahoma. Tell us what happened next. I think I was sent on a 30-day leave home. Mm -hmm. and I, <clears throat> I was transferred to Florida, and I joined a NAS, Banana River. That was a naval air station that had seaplanes that uh, did any sub work on the East Coast. And we joined them, and we stayed there doing uh, any sub patrols on the East Coast. Um, and how did you like Florida? How did you like Florida after being at the Great Lakes in Oklahoma? I, I loved it. There's nothing like it. <clears throat> and how long were you stationed in Florida? I'm not quite sure, but I think it was uh, six months to almost a year. And doing any sub patrols, uh, Key West. Okay. And were you assigned to a squadron? Uh, yes, I was. <clears throat> it was VP 19. Do you remember what VP stood for? Yes. Uh, VP is Patrol Obama. VP is a, a naval designation for the type of airplane it was. Now you mentioned that your squadron was part of anti-sub patrols off the coast of Key West. Did you yeah. come across any subs? A lot of <laughs> maybe subs, but nothing that proved out to be a genuine attack sub, so no. Mm -hmm. no. And what happened after Florida? <clears throat> I was given a leave, mm -hmm. sent to the West Coast with all brand new airplanes, what they call a PBM-5, and everything, uh, the latest of radar equipment, the latest of guns, uh, the latest of everything. Mm -hmm. so. Now, in addition to the machine guns, were you trained to repair radar equipment? No, we had a radio man mm -hmm. and a navigator, and they 
They did all the radio and navigation equipment. We never know. No. And at the time you were on the West Coast, what was your rank? I was uh, aircraft machinist mate third class. All right, so now this kind of brings us to sometime in 1944, correct? Yes. All right, tell us what, what, what was happening. Then we, uh, we left for the Pacific. We got to Pearl Harbor. We were uh, almost at any we talk, and they called us back for a retrofit of what they call JADO. <clears throat> and we had to have JADO because the waters in the, in the Pacific are a little warmer than the Atlantic, and the swells were tough for landing and takeoff. And we, with a full load, mm -hmm. it was almost impossible to get off, off the water. <clears throat> A takeoff speed was 90 miles an hour to 110, and it was rough water was hard to get up to that. So we got Jado on uh, small keg of gunpowder. We were told under each wing that was set off by the pilot would give them the additional lift for takeoff. Gunpowder under each wing. That's what they told us, yeah. It's amazing you didn't blow up. <laughs> that was, that's what it was doing, blowing up what they yeah. were restricting. <clears throat> they were restricting the, mm -hmm. the explosive part of it, so it give us thrust. <clears throat> so, okay, you're on the West Coast. You're no. being Which, sent off into the air with a little bit of gunpowder. Tell us what happened next. No. <clears throat> this all transpired with the... <clears throat> we'd already... <clears throat> we'd already gone to sea and come back to Pearl and got the retrofit of uh, the jettisons under each wing and went back out again and took up regular patrol routine and any sub patrols, air sea rescue, bypassed Wake. Wake was never. <clears throat> Wound up in Saipan, did that. <clears throat> All kinds of work out of Saipan, air sea rescue, convoy work mostly, and <clears throat> now and then B-29 work. <clears throat> now Larry, during the time you were stationed out in the Pacific, uh, what was the best way uh, for folks to get the latest news updates? Were you scuttlebutt or newspapers? <laughs> no such a thing. Oh. You, you, got a, you got a mail bag, maybe once every other, or whenever it was fit to be delivered, you got a mail bag. And then, <clears throat> and then that mail bag was distributed to all of the, the squadron and the maintenance crew, so that's the only way, or, the only communication we had was with the mail bags, no, no. Okay, so how long were you stationed around Saipan? All our work, main heavy work was out of Saipan and anything else we did off of uh, what they call AVPs and AVs. 
<coughs> a Navy is a seaplane tender converted from a cruiser. A Navy P is a seaplane tender converted from a destroyer. Most of our convoy work was done with AVPs, namely the Castle Rock. Mm -hmm. That was the name of the destroyer. And when we were involved with a seaplane, it was a, a Hamon, and that was uh, mostly maintenance and fuel or whatever. Most of the work was with the with the DE doing convoy work. <clears throat> so now we're talking second half of 1944, correct? Yes. And the United States and their allies are doing the island hopping campaign. Correct. So you must have been kept really busy during that period. Mm -hmm. Most of our work was observation, and he mm -hmm. said, did a lot of uh, long time patrols. <clears throat> but Jap fleet was just about diminished. Mm -hmm. And I went to uh, uh, we went to uh, Chichijima for one patrol. That's where. <clears throat> <clears throat> Bush got shot down. We didn't do any fighting at Chichijima. All we did was uh, rescue. Mm -hmm. That's where uh, Chichijima, then we went to uh, Iwo Jima. I stayed at Iwo Jima. Uh, best part of a week. Went back to Saipan. Went back in the routine patrols, and we were flying within a hundred miles of the Japanese coast. By then, the Japs were on their knees, and the squadron was disbanded, and we were sent back to the states, mm -hmm. and another another gang took over. Oh, everybody got a, this was. <clears throat> okay. Some of 45 around them. Okay. All right, so now you're back in the States. It's 1945. Yeah. <clears throat> it's the end of the war. Tell us what happened next. I did an assignment to Floyd Bennett Field, New York. I was playing captain for Admiral the Florist. Mm -hmm. I stayed there till they closed Floyd Bennett Field. I, <clears throat> I was transferred to Florida, and I <clears throat> did a crash crew for the remainder of my uh, enlistment. And I, Outlying fields for the pilots being trained, uh, touch and go landings. I did that for the amount of my enlistment. Mm -hmm. Just a matter of clarification, oh, you're still an aviation machinist, correct? Second class. Second yes. class. Yes. I got promoted when I was in the come home from the Pacific. And while you were at Floyd Bennett in, in Florida, you were still part of a, a mechanic crew? Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, I just wanted yes. to make sure on that. Floyd Bennett Field, I was what they call a plane captain for. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> Admiral the Florist. And all I did was maintain the maintenance. I see that it was done, I didn't do it. See that it was done on the Admiral's plane. Mm -hmm. It was a twin engine Cessna. So mm -hmm. The big shot was a 
warrant officer pilot with me. So. So uh, where and when you were were you discharged? I was discharged in Florida mm -hmm. on, on December of forty eight. So you stayed in the Navy for about six years. Yes, I did a six year hitch, yeah. Wow. <coughs> and you got out as aviation mechanic second class. Yeah. Almost senior in the state of Florida. Mm -hmm. <laughs> For what it's worth. <clears throat> so what we, what did you oh excuse me, what did you do after you were discharged? I went back to work for Hood Milk. Okay. And what did you do there? As a truck mechanic for Hoods. Now, did anyone kind of, uh, anyone from the government call you up when Korea took place in the early 50s? No. Okay, they left you alone then? Yes. Yeah, okay. And where did you, um, where did you live during uh, post-war? Were you still in Melrose, Lawrence? No. I was married and I was living with my in-laws in Reading. Mm -hmm. And you, of course, had, your ch had children. I had one, but I had the other two when I bought the house in Melrose. Okay. So yeah. you went back to Melrose? I, yes. I, I purchased a house in Melrose and move from Reading to Melrose. Mm -hmm. Now, Larry, um, did you receive any commendations or medals for your service? No, just the Asia Pacific and Atlantic. Okay. And did you join any service organizations? No, I did not. Okay. Until what year? <clears throat> I just joined one. I, I, I belong to the Veterans of Foreign Wars now. Mm -hmm. But I didn't do only for five or six years, maybe. Okay. I, <clears throat> I did not join any, mm -hmm. any organization. Okay. Larry, uh, what did it mean for you to serve your country in the military? Honorable, very, very honorable. I <clears throat> couldn't. Couldn't do enough for it. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and how long did you work for H.P. Hood? Probably 38, 39 years. Good for you. Yeah. And you, you retired? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And what have you been doing these days? I retired from Hoods and I went to work for Framingham State College mm -hmm. as a storekeeper. I worked there for how many years? Uh, maybe ten. Hmm. About ten years? About, okay. yes. Okay. Larry, is there any um, anything else you would like to tell the audience, or at least those who are going to be watching this interview. Yes, I'm scared to death that the feeling for the country isn't the same as it was then. A devotion, not feeling, devotion for the country isn't the same now as it was then. <clears throat> Right. And is there anything else you would like to say before we wrap up this interview? No. God bless America. You're the best. Okay, Larry Honeywell, <laughs> we thank you so much for taking part in the Natick Veterans Oral History Project. Thank you for having me. <laughs>